What's up, awesome admins? Welcome to the last episode of Be an Innovator with Design. Awesome admin. If you've been following along, you know we've been redesigning that account page, giving our users the 360 degree view of their customers by leveraging principles of relationship design. We've discussed the first five phases, empathy, defining the problem, ideation, prototyping, and building. For episode six, we're gonna hear from Leanne and Adam about the last phase of design thinking validation. All right, so we built our page. We followed those important design principles. Adam, are we done with this page now? No, we are not done, Leanne. The design process doesn't stop once you've launched. Admins should plan to gather feedback from the users regularly and then use this feedback to validate and inform future projects. What are some of the areas that you see often overlooked when soliciting this type of user feedback and research? It's super easy to design to your bias. Um, It's easy to fall into old habits of saying, I think I know what's best. Um, Really all you're doing is designing for yourself. You must include as many different types of users in your research and design process as possible. This is the best way to eliminate bias and ensure solutions are inclusive and diverse as possible. Um, Not every experience is perfect. It's an iterative process of listening, collaborating, testing, learning, and growing. Um, Design is really never done. You know, do you have users with a disability or who identify as a member of an underrepresented group that you can invite into your research and design process? That's so important. And what are some additional considerations for admins as they're looking at the different tools and ways to actually collect this feedback? You can collect feedback from your users in many different ways, such as research studies, surveys, in-person experiences like focus groups. Uh, However, collecting feedback within the app uniquely helps you understand how end users experience technology in the moment. It's contextual, brings the voice of the end user to the center of the experience. Uh, Our Salesforce Lightning design system, in-app feedback guidelines provide best practices and patterns for a range of scenarios and tactics from doc composers to modals. Rebecca will share a link at the end. Uh, But today we'll focus on one pattern, the inline feedback pattern. Inline feedback persists on the page and is used to collect a response to short surveys. It's displayed on the page and doesn't block any other part of the interface or disrupt the user's task flow. So Adam said that we would be building an inline feedback method. And we're going to do this with one of our very favorite admin tools, Flow, which we'll be deploying with an action button, which is inline. So now let's transition to our demo scenario where we will build a flow to collect feedback from our users right in the app. Okay, so we're back in our test environment where we created that new page and rolled it out to our users. I've done a little bit of work already here by creating a new user feedback custom object and adding two custom fields, a long text area comments field and a number field called rating. That's all of the prep work I've done here, as well as add a tab to my app. And I'm gonna use this custom object for user feedback to create my flow. So in setup, let's go ahead and go to flows and say, let's create a new flow. Now, there's a lot of options when you're creating a new flow. Because this is something we want our users to click through and populate with data, it's a guided process, we're gonna select screen flow. We can select an auto layout or a free form. We're gonna go with free form for right now, but I'll show you how cool auto layout is in just a minute. So we're in our new flow canvas. And the first thing we're gonna do is bring on the interaction element of screen. Now I wanna populate this with the welcoming label. The label is what your users will see. So we're gonna call this label, thank you for your feedback. However, the API name, I would recommend making something that Uh, makes it easier to track what the screen does. So this is user feedback one. Now I can go ahead and remove any navigation buttons that we really don't need for this flow, like previous and pause. Just clean those up off the screen. Great, so I've got the structure of my new screen. Now I wanna add a uh, element for my users to give feedback. We're gonna do that in the form of a slider. So we've got a slider component that we drug onto the screen here. We're gonna name this feedback rating. And the label, again, is what the users will see. So we're going to uh, name it something instructive, like how useful is this page? Now with the range, let's keep it something 
relatively small, like five or 10. So we'll pick five for our example. And with the slider size, let's go ahead and make this a large slider. Um, that's just the size of the slider as it's presented on the page. Step size is the increments that you can move the slider on. So we're gonna go ahead and leave that at one and we're gonna make the default value five. Great, so I've got my, my one element input for that screen. Let's add another screen, because um, remember on that custom object, we did have two fields that we wanted users to populate for us. We're gonna also call this screen, thank you for your feedback. And we'll name this one user feedback too. Now let's bring over a long text area for comments from our users. So we're gonna make the label something instructive. Again, please share any additional feedback. And this is also where you can get kind of creative with how you communicate with your users, um, what's the language that you use at your organization, what particular types of feedback do you want, do you want to put any coaching in about changes that you made and ask for feedback in that particular area. So you can get creative here with what this looks like for you. Next, we've added our two screens, but we need to do something with that input from the users. So we're going to create a new record. So we drug over that data element for create records and we're gonna call this create feedback record. And in the objects, we're going to select that custom object that we created, the, the user feedback object. And here's where we set the field values for that user feedback. So this is where we can say, I want the comments field to be populated by the feedback comments and I want the rating field to be populated by that rating slider that we created. And you can see that in the available screen components. Great, so I've said what to do with that data. Let's go ahead and connect our screen to that create record element. And let's save our new flow. Um, this is of course a very important step to save your flow. Um, usually you'd wanna put a description and things like that in as well. And let's go ahead and check out the run exercise here too and see what this looks like just to click through it and see what the experience is gonna be like for our users. Great. Um, I've activated this. Oh, and one last thing. Let's go ahead and check out that auto layout. Oh, so much prettier, all lined up. Auto layout is super useful, especially when you get into building more complex flows. All right, so let's go back to our object manager now we want to create an action on the account. So we went to accounts, actions, and the action type is flow. And this is going to be how we surface that flow on the page. So we've said the flow is the user feedback flow. We're going to call it feedback. Great. So now that action exists. So we created a custom object. We created the flow screens. We created the account action. And now our last step is to go to the page itself and add that action to the page. So we're back on our account page and we're gonna go to edit page. In the Lightning App Builder, we can now add actions and manage actions right from Lightning App Builder. So we're gonna go ahead and say, yes, I wanna to upgrade to dynamic actions. We'll migrate from the existing actions from our account layout. And this will give us a lot more control over how we choose to surface actions on the page. And it's just, it's a lot easier to do from one place. So I can see all of these actions that are available. I had a lot of actions available by default with my account page, but I'm going to add an action for feedback. So I added my action for feedback and click done. And now right in this panel here on the side of Lightning App Builder, I'm going to go ahead and drag this up so it's the first action that my users see, just so they're more encouraged to fill it out and to participate in this feedback process. So we're going to bring it all the way up to the top. I can see on my canvas here in the middle that the actions on the top right of the screen have changed. And when I save my page and go back, I can see that new feedback action is the first thing that my users see. I can go ahead and fill it out use the handy slider, share my feedback. Again, as you're building this for your test environments, get creative with it. Get creative with the language that you're using. Get creative with the fields that you're adding. Um, there's a lot of ways to gather feedback, and this is one way that we're trying to encourage you to ask for user feedback. And of course, on the tab, I can review all of the feedback and very importantly, look at the comments and the average score. <laughs> Okay, great. So we just built our feedback flow and we deployed it with an inline action button so our users can provide feedback. We can also review that feedback in that list view.
Thank you so much, Adam, for joining us throughout these exercises and sharing your design expertise with our community. Any parting words for all of the admins out there? Thanks, Leanna, Rebecca. Yeah, the opportunity for admins to add and grow design skills has never been more timely. I mean, admins have a head start already because they embody excellent communication and stakeholder management and problem solving skills. Um, there's an opportunity to build on that with core relationship design thinking skills, research best practices, and additional UX heuristics. Um, when your design knowledge grows, you can apply it to make better the experiences for your users and organizations and even your own careers. So I can't wait to see your designs. Awesome. Thank you so much, Adam. And thank you, awesome admins, for following along on these episodes and exercises with us together to build systems, to collect and iterate on feedback, build and deploy prototypes, and gather more feedback from your end users. We will see you next time. Thanks, Adam and Leanne. More feedback, more insights is what I like to say. As admins trying to drive adoption, the final step cannot be missed. All right, so some key takeaways from our episode. One, design is never done. It's an iterative process of listening, collaborating, testing, learning, and growing. Next, collect feedback within the app to see how your end users are experiencing the technology in the moment. Lastly, inline feedback persists on the page and is used to collect feedback or responses in short surveys. All right, so now it's your turn. Use a developer edition sandbox or a trailhead playground to build a method for gathering feedback from your end users. So you can go ahead and build that same flow that we are building for our account page, or you can come up with another way to gather user feedback within the page experience. And then please share your feedback method with us using the hashtag being innovator on Twitter. Find the in-app feedback design guidelines and more resources in our trail mix. And also, we do ask that you please provide us feedback by filling out the survey in the trial mix. That way, we can continue to learn and improve these series uh, for you in the future. It's been a blast joining you for being an innovator with design. I hope you enjoyed it and are starting to see how this new design knowledge will enable you to take your page designs to the next level. While we focused on the account page for this Speed Innovator, you can take these skills and apply them to any project. With that, thank you for joining us and see you next time.